Okay, so we're going to look today at respiratory history. I'm aiming to co cover that in roughly around 10 minutes, certainly less than 15 minutes. And we're going to look at some of the salient features and some of the common pitfalls. And hopefully this will just be a quick overview that will help you in a respiratory rotation. Format same as always for taking a history. We're going to do an introduction, the presenting complaint, the history of the presenting complaint, past medical history, drug history, family history, social history, and the all-important ideas, concerns, and expectations, the ICE. <clears throat> so in your introduction, check the name of the patient and the date of birth. You really don't want to take a whole history and then find out you've got the wrong patient. Introduce yourself. Tell them what your name is and what your role is. Are you a medical student? Are you in your second year? <clears throat> and tell them a little bit of signposting as to what you want to talk about today. Um, so you may not be seeing a case, a hot case, it may be uh, taking a history from a patient from something that happened two years ago, in which case focusing them in on the fact that you want to talk about their breathing or when they had that chest pain or shortness of breath will be very helpful. So presenting complaint, what are the typical ones for respiratory history? Typically we have cough or shortness of breath or wheeze or chest tightness, chest pain I'm not going to cover quite so much because I think that fits better into talking about a cardiac history but I will cover it briefly today. So with a cough we want to look at the time frame, is this an acute or a chronic problem? Um, that's really important so if it's been going on for three weeks much more likely to be something infective possibly, if it's been going on for months and months and months and perhaps getting progressively worse, we're much more likely to be looking at something like an asthma or a COPD causing this chronic cough. Um, again, is this a one-off episode or have there been multiple similar episodes, which again may suggest more of a chronic underlying condition rather than just a virus or, or just a, a chest infection? Really key question to identify different differentials is whether it's a dry or a productive cough. So a dry cough, much more likely to be things like asthma, productive cough, maybe thinking more along the lines of um, an infective pathology. And if it is produ productive, ask them about the colour of their sputum. Use the word phlegm with a the patient. They might not understand sputum. And if they start describing their colour, next question is, has there been blood in that sputum or in that phlegm? And the technical word for that is hemoptysis. And then ask them if this cough has been worsening, improving or staying about the same. If you've seen a patient two weeks down the line and they've had this productive cough, but actually it's getting better, that it's, the cough may still be there, but they're bringing up less, they're feeling generally better in themselves. If you're thinking this was a, maybe a chest infection or a viral infection, it sounds like it's self-limiting. That's very helpful. We obviously have to think about red flags. So ask about weight loss, ask about fever, ask about night sweats. We're thinking here about things like lung cancer. We're thinking about things like tuberculosis and we're thinking about things like lymphoma. Ask them about foreign travel, again, relevant from an infective point of view, particularly things like tuberculosis. And then sometimes you'll see patients who just have a cough. It's throaty, it's a little bit productive, but they're not unwell with it. They're not short of breath. They're not wheezing. Nothing else is really going on. Ask them about nasal and sinus symptoms. They may well just be getting a bit of mucus dripping down the back of their throat and that's causing them to have a cough or from the other direction it may be that they're having a bit of indigestion acid reflux and that's causing them to have a chronic cough so just bear in mind those two very simple complaints which might explain a chronic cough shortness of breath again time frame really helpful to determine differentials um, is it an acute versus a chronic problem in terms of severity helpful to ask them how it's limiting them what what activities are they struggling with if they're barely able to speak without stopping for a breath, that's worrying. Um, if they're able to talk like I am now fluently without having any difficulty with their breathing, if they're able to engage in their normal activities, then it's probably not too severe. Um, is it happening just when they exert themselves? Is it happening at rest as well? Is it happening just when they go up the stairs or go up a hill, but on the flat they're fine? Those kind of questions can help define the, the severity. And is that shortness of breath associated with cough or wheeze, which may may help you be thinking about a respiratory pathology, or they may talk about um, more about chest pain or more about edema, so swelling of the ankles. Um, and you may be thinking that the, the shortness of breath is more, more cardiac in origin, because remember, heart failure and cardiac conditions, there is a big overlap between cardiac and respiratory. So some questions can, can guide you more towards one than the other. Wheeze, again, acute or chronic, very common for particularly young children more. 
chest pain I won't cover very much because this is really one that I would like to cover more with cardiac history taking but it is relevant for respiratory history particularly what we call pleuritic chest pain so that chest pain that is worse when you take a deep breath in um, which we see in conditions like pulmonary embolism and pneumothorax so ask them about that ask them if it's a sharp pain that's worse when they're taking a deep breath in Ask them Socrates, so the site, the onset, the character, the radiation, the associated features, the timing, any exacerbating or relieving features, and the severity of that pain. Socrates is just a good way of assessing any pain. But like I said, I wouldn't go into loads of detail in a respiratory history on chest pain, but certainly establish whether it's pleuritic in nature or not. And pleuritic chest pain can also be caused by musculoskeletal problems in the chest, which obviously is much less worrying than a PE or a pneumothorax. And questions I found over time that have been very helpful to establish whether it's musculoskeletal is, is it worse when you press on the area, which suggests musculoskeletal? Is it worse when you turn your chest from side to side, so when you do thoracic rotation? And I actually ask patients to do that, pop their hands, cross their arms over and pop one hand on each shoulder and then just rotate the chest from left to right. If that brings on pain, much more likely to be a musculoskeletal origin. And is that chest pain happening on exertion or at rest? Obviously, worry about chest pain on exertion. Could this be could this be an angina cardiac related? Um, is it more of a chest tightness or a chest pain? Because again, chest tightness is much more fitting with COPD asthma. If we're having a pleuritic chest pain and it's associated with shortness of breath, that again is increasing our worry about PE or pneumothorax. And if we're thinking PE, you could do a quick assessment to see whether there's risk factors for that. Is there some calf swelling? Have they recently been in mobile or in long flight? <clears throat> Have they got a history of DVT or PE? Um, you can also ask about edema. So have they got swelling of their ankles um, particularly? Past medical history, so it, have they had a history of childhood asthma? Have they had a history of recurrent chest infections? Do they have other lung or heart related conditions? Um, do they have comorbidities that will cause immunosuppression and increase their risk for pneumonias and other chest infections? So do they have chronic kidney disease? Do they have heart failure? Are they HIV positive? Are they on immunosuppressant drugs for their rheumatoid arthritis? All of those questions will be relevant. And then I think this is a good place to ask them about previous tests and investigations that have been performed, such as given a trial of an inhaler or had a chest X-ray or had a peak flow or had a spirometry performed. And what were the results of these? Um, were the treatments they've been tried on before helpful or not? With drug history, we think about dry cough causing thing can be caused by um, an ACE inhibitor. But remember the timing of that. That should really start roughly around the time that the ACE inhibitor was started, not four years later. And it will be a dry cough with no other features. You will not really be getting shortness of breath or other things. Um, a beta blocker can cause shortness of breath in people who are um, asthmatic. So bear that in mind. Otherwise, you're sort of asking about inhalers that have been prescribed. Have they had courses of antibiotics and steroids? And what has been the effect of these things? Every time they've had a course of antibiotic and steroids, has it totally re relieved their symptoms or has it made no difference at all? Again, it will just give you an idea of where we're at with the, with the working diagnosis. With their social history, smoking is obviously hugely relevant. Now, don't fall into the common pitfall of saying, do you smoke? It sounds really like a simple question, do you smoke? But a patient who has stopped smoking a week ago will reply no that question um, people don't want to admit that they're smoking especially when they've come about a, a lung related um, presenting complaint so a much better question to ask is have you ever smoked then they will tell you if they smoked a week ago or 50 years ago they might even tell you about the one cigarette they had at school um, but ask that question you'll get a much more honest answer and then from that you can calculate the pack years so 20 a day for a year is a year pack history so from that you can work out um, how many pack years they've had and then ask about alcohol, alcohol and recreational drugs just like you always do but especially call out cannabis weed um, just 
you know, almost as bad as smoking, really, it has an impact on your lungs. So ask specifically about that. And then ask them about their occupation, their pets and hobbies. Um, are they exposed to any particular chemicals or dust? Have they been exposed to asbestos? Um, do they keep birds? All of these things are relevant for a respiratory history. And then ask them big points here for empathy. Does it limit their ability to self-care or work? So does it affect your ability to do things for yourself? Is it affecting your ability to get to work? Gives you a good gauge on the severity of their symptoms. Also shows that you're a human being with feelings and, and care about the effect that this is ha having on them. And obviously from a GP point of view, you may need to sign them off sick. That's relevant again in the hospital context. You may need to give a sick note for work if they're not fit. And ask about family history, about asthma, atopy. Remember, atopy is things like asthma, hay fever, eczema, food allergies in the family. Um, is there a family history of cystic fibrosis? Is there a family history of lung cancer? Um, are there lung, you can just ask lung conditions generally. And obviously remember there's overlap with cardiacs. So it may be relevant to ask about cardiac history here as well. And then the all important ice. Um, often when people first start asking the ice questions, patients find them either rude or strange. Um, and that's a lot to do with the wording. So if you say to somebody, uh, did you have any idea what it was? It almost sounds like you don't know what you're talking about and you're asking them for their opinion. Uh, whereas if you say, have you had any thoughts about what it might be? They're much more likely to to open up and say, well, I was worried it might be this or that. Um, or I had no idea. Um, and then with concerns, again, rather than asking, is there anything you're concerned about? It's helpful to just say, is there anything you're particularly worried about? And I sometimes add to that just so I make sure I address it in the consultation. Um, and they, then they understand why you're asking that question. And with expectations, what are you expecting I would do for you today can come off, come across a little bit rude. It's much nicer to say, what were you hoping I might be able to do for you today? And if they look puzzled, maybe offer them some suggestions like, were you hoping for a chest x-ray? Were you hoping for an inhaler? Um, et cetera. So it translate ideas to thoughts, concerns to worries and expectations to hopes. And hopefully you won't have any awkward experiences with a patient. If you do, feel free to comment them below. Um, so that is our whistle stop tour of a respiratory history. I hope that's been helpful. Um, in order for me to feel enthused to carry on doing these videos, please comment and like because then I know that they have been valuable and appreciated. And obviously, if you've got any feedback or any questions, feel free to, to add that below. Um, and I aim to try and do one of these videos a week to help you be well prepared for all of your um, clinical rotations. Thank you. Bye.